In the world of Hollywood, movies get greenlit and redlit. They get remade and rebooted. But we are the ideal. I'm Sam Gash. And I'm Mike Bobbitt, and this is Ideal Remake. We watched Demolition Man with DJ Dangler. DJ Dangler. He's DJ. number one. He's number one. Step into the ring and tell us about yourself. DJ Dangler, I... what is your DJ d d d d d deal <laughs> I love Demolition Man. I loved this movie in the theater when I saw it as a kid. Like, loved it. I can remember getting into my buddy's mother's minivan and wanting to go home and draw pictures of us living in this world. <laughs> I was 21 in 1993 when it came out. 1993? Yes. I'd have been 12 years old. I was five. Yeah. You saw this in the theater when you were 12 years old? Yeah. I mean, that's the kind of thing my parents would do. I saw Blade Runner in the theater when I was probably about 12. And Blade Runner, I would say, is on the same level as this. But it's a good movie. As far movie. as graphic yeah. content goes. Blade Runner is actually a good movie where Demolition Man... I think I was well into my teens before I saw my first R-rated movie in the theaters. My parents certainly <laughs> would never have taken me to one. Yeah. Uh, it was I... The Thin Blue Line. Ooh. <laughs> that's neat. I think I knew that about you. I think you told me that before. I may and have. That's that's an in, that's a cool thing for your parents to do, though. I grew never up. Take, never show me an R-rated movie. No. That's the reason why I hadn't seen like any of these. Oh, your parents didn't take you to see Thin Blue Line. No. Oh, okay. I went with friends. Okay. I grew up with blood and guts were fine, just no naked. Yep. 100%. This movie has naked in it. has a flash of boobs in it, yeah. Mm. That would have bothered my and mother so a much lot more of, the freezing people and chopping their A heads lot in. of cryo balls. I feel like I saw a lot of Sylvester Stallone's testicles. In I this. didn't see any testicles. I didn't testicles. see any testicles in this. I think you're dreaming of testicles, Mike Bobbitt. I do dream of testicles, yeah. but I'm pretty sure you I saw, saw some a lot of... <laughs> Bean bag. I was uh, I was telling these guys earlier. Six months ago, I didn't know this movie existed. Yeah, was, I I have to know what made you watch it. So I feel like I've mentioned this before, but I don't know if I have. My movie knowledge is severely limited. A lot of the movies that I should have seen growing up, I just didn't because, as previously mentioned, what? my parents didn't show them to me. So I have a couple friends, both of whom are named Cam, who discovered this information. It's mostly Cam Evans who did this, and he has, for the past year and a half, two years, has been doing. Movie nights of movies Sam hasn't seen. So over the course of that, I've seen movies like Jurassic Park, uh, Goodfellas, Coming to America, uh, all of these classic amazing movies that I've never seen. All of those make sense. What put Demolition Man on the list? Every once in a while I'd go over, because he likes watching, like we watched City of Angels, we watched Goodfellas, we watched uh, uh, No Country for Old Men. At some point we're going to have a conversation about this, because I hate No Country for Old Men. I love No Country for Old Men. Great you movie. would love I No love, Country for Old Men. I adore the movie. You're both wrong. It's a masturbatory piece of crap. And uh, that's why I like it. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So at least we're on the same page. I, that's I, it. That's it's it. a masturbatory movie, but that's I don't it. think it's a piece of crap. I love Barton Fink. So who knows? Barton Fink is excellent. I agree. I don't know what connection you're making between indulgent. They're, they're, they're a little indulgent. I mean, yeah. the uh, Barton Fink is Coen Brothers, right? Yeah. And it's really here's what it is to be a brilliant writer. This is about a writer. So that's why it's a little bit, but still. Okay. And so th these are so they he likes showing me movies that are like you know good movies. But sometimes I show up. It's been a long day of work. I'm like I can't. I just want an action movie. Yeah. I just I just want something dumb that I can kind of like get lost in. That'll be great. And so this movie came up as a recommendation. I don't know how. I don't know why. But we ended up watching two movies that night. I don't remember what the other one was. Yeah. But I remember Demolition Man. So I watched Listen, this for the first time. I need time to a see the Sylvester ago. Stallone, Rob Schneider collabo, and I'm not quite ready for Dread yet. So let's yeah. watch Demolition Man. I've never seen Dread. There's no need. That's yeah. cool. That one's really not even like a like like this. I think is fun. Oh, bag. and it, that one's Judge Dread because yeah, Dread Dread's is pretty good. One. Dread's the more recent one. Yeah, it's Queen Cersei's in it. Hetty. Uh Lena Hetty. Yeah, yeah, she's in it. Every time they said Sandra Bullock's name, Lena Hux or you thought of uh, Lena H uh, something Huxley. Yeah. Uh, Eliana Huxley. Yeah. I was like, oh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's Cersei's like, name. It's like Lamina Huxley. And I thought that every single time. So the movie starts in 1996. We're in wow, Los they Angeles. Had, they had a dire, they had a bleak outlook for 19, for three years. In this the was huge. This but, was Los Angeles in the 90s. But LA this was is burning. right around the time of the OJ trials. Yeah. And, and uh, the, uh, the Rodney, Rodney King. King. So I could see, yeah, it's a bleak look of 
this is where it's going to be. But don't worry, because we'll have cryo freezing. Well, also, this... I, I also loved how the gu- bullets were lasers. Did you notice that the guns in 1996 all looked like uh, See, they like didn't... contra lasers? They didn't shoot anyone. No, but there were guns going off at the at the helicopters. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And they were space guns. They were 100 percent space well, guns. Th- do you remember when we? Uh, do you remember when we first invaded uh, Iraq and there were all those like kind of like tracer bullets, tracer yeah. bullet things? That's kind of what they made me think of. Okay, they yeah. made but me think of this movie. Came yeah. In, in 1993, in... the Rodney King riots were 1992. The only reason I know as much about this as I do is because I have a friend who's an editor and he edited a documentary called LA 92, right. which is about the Rodney right. King riots. April and... 26, 1992, yeah, there was a riot in like, the streets. Tell me, where were you? That's sublime. Uh, I mean, it's I'm pretty, not it's happy pretty, about it's, it. It's what band is good. it? <laughs> <laughs> Sam um, and I both going for the... Yeah, the uh, low joke. The easiest word play. But I could completely see how they'd be like, well, this is just the end of times for Los Angeles. The rest of the... the Little did they know it was going to be the big one in 2010. I love I love a good flame in Hollywood sign. Yeah. yeah Every time that the was Hollywood neat. sign gets distorted. Like, the Hollywood sign is made out of fabric, right? Wouldn't it just go up like a Roman candle? Yep. Yeah. No, yeah. No, it's not made out of fabric. It's metal. It's, yeah. Well, no, because they convert, like, this year over New Year's, they made it Hollyweed. They put fabric over it yeah, to make it Hollyweed. With, yeah. with fabric. But the sign itself is metal. Okay. Like, yeah. the... Okay. Yeah. Got it. I thought yeah. that they literally, like, detached, moved. No. No. no oh. They just blacked it out. Yeah. yeah. That makes more sense. Yeah. Interesting. I've so been the movie... up there. Oh, yeah? yeah? I have not. But you're more connected than I am. So the movie opens up in 1996. More connected? Yeah. I walked, I walked up that I, hill. I walked north a mile. I mean, I've walked around the Beechwood, whatever it is, estates. I've never been to the sign. Like, I've never touched the Hollywood sign. You can't. I know. you can go up to the radio antenna behind it. I know. I've, yeah. I know people who've then climbed over and gone down. So I yeah. thought that's what you did. I wouldn't because I'm a law-abiding citizen. I would never have been cryo-frozen back <laughs> in my <my life. laughs> I I like that they... It's three years in the future, and they decide, yeah, we have the technology to reduce a human being down to one Kelvin. Yeah. One Immediately. Kelvin. And they also 100% can rewrite your brain in that time, too. Like, right? like, well, that they, could have they, happened any time within the 26 years. I I got the feeling enough. that right. they could have done it right before they thawed him, where they were like, oh, let's... Okay, well, so well. to continue forward with, with the story, uh, Sylvester Stallone is John demolition Spartan, man. the demolition man. I don't know why he has that nickname. Is it just because it's hey. whenever he goes to arrest people, he blows up the entire building. Like yeah, when he went it. to go rescue that small child from the mini mall, he destroyed a seven million dollar mini mall to rescue a child who had a twenty five thousand dollars. Twenty five thousand dollars. And then she says, "Fuck you, lady." She does say that, yeah. little girl. It's great. I, my nickname for him, if I would have been another cop, wouldn't have been Demolition Man. It would have been Shitty Cop. Yeah, but that's oh, yeah. not really a good. He's a bad her. cop. Let's yeah. not. Oh yeah, it's I I forget like I, I hate to make anything political but like but just like the underlying conservative bend of all action movies from my childhood where the good guy's a white guy and the bad guy's a black guy not just that but just the, the good guy law and order comes from a gun and not understanding other people's perspectives like mm-hmm. even then like the whole idea that in the future every Sylvester Stallone movie you think that's the case that. of this movie too because he comes to an understanding with Dennis Leary at the end yeah but even then it's mostly you you sissies need to quit being sissies and start acting like a goddamn man that's true it is the Dennis Leary character who's also pro-gun as yeah. opposed to the uh, rest of society which is anti-gun because they ain't real men anymore. Yeah, they've all quit knowing how to be a man. That's true. Right. Demolition Man John Spartan is going after Simon Phoenix, captures him. Somehow there are a bunch of people that Simon Phoenix had taken stole 30 a bus. had he stole a bus and had taken 30 hostages. When Demolition Man went in to go rescue these hostages, he did scanned a thermo and scan. he did a thermo scan and there was just uh, Eight people. Phoenix and his so men. So did they ever explain why? Oh, they were already dead. Phoenix had already killed them. He said then that. why was Sylvester Stallone? Because Phoenix said they were not. Phoenix said he didn't kill and them. And apparently they couldn't have done any tests to see if they were dead or not in, with the inhalation. This is 1996. People under, don't understand technology. Hey, yeah. let's drop a blue orb into water and freeze a guy. Yeah. Okay, so because of faulty police work, a shitty cop yeah. is cryogenically frozen. For 70 years. 26 oh, for, years. For, for no, no. 36 years. He was 36 years. For 70. With with parole in 2040 something. Yeah, I think with parole and he in got 40. out. I want to know though. Why, why was John Spartan in there longer than that? Simon Phoenix. Like, oh, I don't. I don't think he was. I think Simon Phoenix was paroled early because uh, Evil Mayor, who you, who as soon as you see him on screen, you're like, yeah, it's a bad guy. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. That's not. In, in, I'm not going to say that's entirely true because I thought bad guy from Shawshank Redemption was going to be the bad guy. Bad guy from Shawshank Redemption. Who was bad? Oh, guy the from... police chief. 
Yeah, the police chief, yeah. George Earl. Oh. The guy at the end that was still there when he was like, you're going to have to get a little dirty and you're going to have to get a lot... Yeah. I assume bad guy from Shawshank I Redemption. Didn't is, even realize he was the bad. He was the guy from Shawshank Redemption. Do you Redemption. see it now? Like, do you I, see? I get that. Yeah, yeah, I can see where you're coming from. Yeah. I I kind of saw him as the the hard ass police commissioner who has to take him away and you're out of line, McGillicuddy. Yeah. So there's an earthquake in 2010 and how big was it? It was the big one. Oh, that's a big yeah. earthquake. Yeah. And then somehow Doctor Cocteau, um, terrible name. Yeah. Awful name. Uh, is the savior of everything and redubs Los Angeles as San Angeles. Yeah, San Angeles. Just a mashup of San Francisco and... Yeah. Or San Diego and uh, Los Angeles. Sure. That's a big... The megacity is a recurring theme in, in future. Yeah. I'm not convinced that there's any world outside of San Angeles. There's no... Yeah. That's what, one of the things I was going to... Like, there's no other countries other than America. No countries? No other cities? No other... Yeah, uh, there's New York. There is New York. The only people who keep mentioning New York are the people from the past. You're right. But no one from the future is saying... What's well, New York? Oh, you mean... <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the guy Cocteau, Dr. Cocteau, terrible name. There are people who are old enough that they... Rem- Instead of Doc Ock, it's Doc Cock. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the, uh, that's the porn parody. Yeah. yeah. There I mean it's it's only 36 years in the future. There are people who remember Yeah, did you, all of the main characters should have been alive a little bit. Right. That For some reason kind of only me. the helicopter pilot was. Yeah, just just Lamb was his last name. I don't know if you guys understand how big the big one really was. That it aged all the children (laughs) 10 to 15 years immediately. I don't even know if they kept track of years. They just said, hey, we've rebuilt society. It's time to go back to where we started from. So it turns out that Doc Cock reprogrammed Wesley (laughs) Snipes to be a super bad guy. Yeah, he gets thought out. And so he can kill food scavengers the yep. leader of the rebellion led by but he's not really a Edgar rebellion Friendly. oh yeah they do graffiti every now and again which is immediately erased and people are like did you hear about the graffiti oh, my God, there were the people... scandal it was almost up for three seconds like yeah they seem to have no dane like like for a terrorist organization right all yeah. they did was steal some food like and they didn't if, even kill guards hey you if, know how i feel about the scraps yeah if they got which they're the bad guys or the food scavengers i think are called the scraps they're called the scraps yeah, yeah. I, so they can fix absolutely everything in the future. But can't find... But can't deal with hungry people? Yeah. In San Angeles? Yeah. San Angeles? Uh, well, Taco Bell has a, a seating limit. So the, <laughs> it has a maximum capacity, and they are now beyond that capacity. Taco Bell being the only restaurant to have survived the franchise wars, which... Let's I say, find funny. How that, much, that was a I'll, funny joke. It's a, how much do you guys want to watch a movie about the franchise wars? Yeah. I would love to see... Uh, like I want to watch two movies based... Like I want to watch the <laughs> franchise wars. Absolutely. Uh-huh. And then I want to know how they discovered the magic blue dot that freezes things instantaneously. It was, uh, what's the... Ice Nine. Thank you, Ice Nine. I zoned out completely, so when that happened at the end, I was like, well, I don't know. I don't know. It just means <laughs> the movie's closer <laughs> to being over. I it love was, that was, blue it, dot. It was at the beginning, too, because that's how they froze uh, Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. So I was zoning out by the beginning. Yeah. Okay. We get that you don't like this movie, Mike. I really did not like this movie. I do. And it's weird for me because I'm trying to figure out, I was going through, <clears throat> I was a big Stallone fan to the point where I had Stallone. I had like the Cobra poster in my bedroom. So I'm trying to figure out exactly where I stopped liking what Stallone. Been right around this time. I liked Stop or My Mom Will Shoot in 1992. In 1993, he did Cliffhanger and then Demolition Man. I don't like Cliffhanger. I don't like Demolition Man. I don't know what happened about me turning 21 that made me go, you know what, Sylvester Stallone? I'm off board. I have a, a suggestion as to what it could be. I think it is hard. Once a guy goes comedy, it's hard to buy him as a tough guy again. I don't like... It could be. I'd like... Yeah. It's fair. I, I think that's... Once Bruce Willis had a had a sense of humor about being Bruce Willis... Bruce Willis has never had a sense of humor about being Bruce Willis. Oh. He's known for this. <laughs> but, like, I don't... But I know what you mean. Yeah, like, like once... Yeah. Once you Robert, start going, I'm Bruce Willis. Yeah. Once you make um, Robert uh, De Niro return to Bruno. I was gonna say Red. Oh, I thought you meant. Yeah, I like going. Red. Yeah, it's fine, but then he can't go back to being John McClane. No, it's like uh, the guy from The Naked Gun can't go back and do drama after having done Naked yep, Gun. Yeah, yeah, Leslie Nielsen. Nielsen. Mm-hmm. Leslie Nielsen. Well, what also I was gonna say dead. is yeah, that right. too. Um, but it was a good vehicle for OJ to tie it back to this movie. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I was gonna say is I think I have seen three Stallone movies. Really? I've seen Demolition Man. I've seen Rocky, which was another one of those movies on that list of movies I've never seen. Yeah. Uh, so I was made to watch Rocky. And I have seen the second Guardians of the Galaxy movie. He's in, okay. that, I, that's a Stallone movie. Uh, I, I can't think of any other Stallone only movies. Only one that, Rocky. Do I need to see more? Yeah. I mean, do yeah. I know? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Do, that's do one I? of those really, yeah. 
I would see Rocky 1, 2, and 3, skip 4, see Rocky Balboa, and I would see Creed. I think I think you need to see Who's Rocky 4. Time? I think you need to see Rocky 4, even if to just be like, oh, this is what it denigrated into. 4's not terrible. 5's terrible. Rocky 4 is just a propaganda film. That's not even wrong. I'll even say that's right, but there are still parts of it that I... That I don't hate, because at the end, it, it wasn't just that Russia sucks, it, but if I can change a little, and you can change a little, it ended up with everybody getting along. You guys aren't making Russia great loses. arguments. The very first first, uh, first Blood, I think, is a really good movie. The first watching. Rambo is a great movie. Yeah. For, it's not what you expect. Yeah. Rambo First Blood is not what you expect. I what watched you... the cartoon when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. What, what do you want, John? What do you want? I want what they want what every soldier who gave his life in Vietnam wants. Yeah. Yeah. Rambo for a sandwich. Yeah. Oh, effectively, yeah. I want my country to love me as much as I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, it's great because it's sad. Like the first Rambo, super sad. By the way, guys, I can't wait to listen back to hear how my Sylvester how Stallone so <laughs> imitation actually sounds. Right. In my head, sounds perfect. Yeah. When I listen to these, to it sounds a lot them, of Macho Man Randy Savage. I'm, does it really? <laughs> yeah, it does. Oh, bone saws yeah. ready. I, I mean, it's probably better than my Stallone impression. My Stallone, Adrian. Yeah. <laughs> It's not, it's Yours not is Stallone at 87. Adrian, I'm <laughs> fallen and I can't get off. <laughs> uh, DJ, what's wonderful. your Stallone? Oh, it's my Stallone. Uh, uh, I, I did it with the, if I change a little bit, you change a little bit. That, that's mine. <laughs> you end up looking like Hacksaw Jim Duggan. <laughs> my Stallone is, is loosely based on Hacksaw Jim Duggan. <laughs> So, Wesley Snipes gets out of uh, ice jail. He gets thought out early to kill. And Cocteau is just sort of like, hey, you got a job to do. Go kill this bag. And Wesley Snipes finds out that he can't shoot Cocteau. And apparently Cocteau didn't think of the whole loophole of, of oh, he can just have else. someone else. I That was I, unbelievable for me. I was like, yeah, yeah. shoot the buddy. I yeah. It does bug me how completely inept everyone in the future was yeah, yeah. everyone like, in the future is like i guess that that's the whole point like, like they, well they're all sissies and they're but like they, they didn't even notice when people were following them or shit like they were just blithering idiots yes i think i was talking to mike about it yesterday when i was a kid i felt like the world loved me like oh the children are our future what a, but i think this might have been right around the time when we were like no nah, fuck these kids like we don't like millennials anymore like we didn't know what millennials were yet, but this was one of those. That's it's, true. You it's, don't hear the children are our future very often anymore. We dislike the future now. We don't like children anymore. What? I don't either. For the record, I hate kids. <laughs> but that that being able to say that that argument has leaked into what parents say now, as opposed to just being it's fine that I don't I like don't kids. I'm a single person that doesn't want kids. Hate kids. I don't really either. I even really kind of like them, but I don't want any. Fair. Um, Here's another observation I had. Uh, Benjamin. Benjamin Bratt is in here. What surf purpose does he serve at all? Who was Benjamin Bratt? Benjamin Bratt played kind of Sandy Bullock's partner. partner. Oh, yeah. That and other then, guy? Did you kind of get a, the feeling that he had a crush on Dennis Leary? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. At the end of the movie, I was convinced like that he two... and Dennis Leary were boning. I did, yeah. I never caught that before, but I feel like that was subtext. I, yeah. I wrote that. Yeah, I, I thought note. those two, yeah. I think because they were a couple. Because they walk out and like... Like he like holds Benjamin, his gun lovingly or and something. And Benjamin Bratt's arm is just kind of like possessively on Dennis Leary's shoulder. Yeah. And like I don't know that like literally the last note I wrote is there's no way Dennis Leary and that guy aren't doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got that too. I'm glad I didn't. Yeah, that makes me feel good. Yeah, hey, there, there is definitely those guys know what the seashells are for. Yeah, that's <laughs> this is a weird thing. So the writer of it just was talking to one of his writing buddies on the phone. He's like, yeah, I'm writing a thing about the future. I need to come up with something. Uh, uh, I don't know for like a something futuristic for like a bathroom scene and the guy he was talking to apparently was in the bathroom and was like I don't know I got like decorative seashells in my bathroom <laughs> I always kind of wondered if that yeah. was the link yeah so that's all it is but yeah. Sylvester Stallone decided oh yeah you use uh, two like uh, chopsticks and you use the third one to scrape out what's left gross we did not need that we did not need that like just this... I think it's better if we have no idea like the right. whole purpose of it is we have no idea because we're from the past and you magic yeah. future people know this cool trick that we don't me being a 12 year old that loved this it did really make me wonder if you could wipe your butt with like the edge of a shell. I was like, "There's no way you could scrape your butt clean. No. You need a fabric." But yeah, I obsessed over it. But I never thought of the chopstick aspect. I don't like. Care. I also assumed that you would cup your balls with one of, <laughs> and I don't know how that would help or what. But in my head, I was like, "I guess you probably rest, probably rest your balls on." One. I've never had to use toilet paper to chopstick. 
stuff out of my book. You're right. I guess I wasn't thinking You know what? All. Let me back up. That's not entirely true. <laughs> of course I've used chopsticks to get <laughs> stuff out of my butt. Um, <laughs> but just, you know, just... This episode's a lot dirtier with DJ. It is. That's on me. But you know what? That's I think what the I, explicit label is for. I yeah. shamed you in the first episode for you saying did. darn, practically. I think so. Yeah. Well, okay. So I'm going to get... So uh, once this episode is saw, thought out, he goes to a phone booth, has magic typing powers, yeah, where he, he just he knows picks everything his hand about up the and future. down. Yeah. He learns everything about the future. <laughs> I, I didn't... Yeah. He's so good at the computer <laughs> that he doesn't have to type. Yeah. He can play a computer like Beethoven plays piano <laughs> in a movie. <laughs> 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 and... So, anyway, Wesley Snipes is a bad guy. So, back at the police station, Sandra Bullock is obsessed with the 90s, I guess. Yeah, that was a, it, but it wasn't really the 90s. It was clearly sometimes the 70s and Well, 50s. that's the thing. Like, <laughs> the movie came out in 93. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She wouldn't know. They wouldn't know. Yeah. But here's my problem with everything Sandra Bullock did. Every single one of her lines was ADR'd. I don't know what that means. I don't. Every single one of her lines was, was recorded after the I'm fact. I'm sure okay. everyone's lines were ADR'd. Maybe hers just weren't done well. That, I think that might be true because I th- a lot of them, if not all of them, This were. is and very I'm... early on in her career because I think this is where I had a Sandy Bullock crush that started here and went through to 1997 for Speed 2 Cruise Control. Uh, I've and never be- seen Speed. For this, she had only really had the um, Bionic Woman movie and Love Potion, Love Potion Potion number nine. Those were the only other big-ish things that she did. So this is really her first breakout role. And I thought she did a good job. Like, I don't think she was... It was weird that she shaved off her, eye, shaved off her eyebrows and drew them back in, but that's just a thing. But I, I mean, I think she did a fairly good job and I thought, like, there's a moment at the end where she kicks someone's ass and then kills someone that you're like... <laughs> it's just okay with it immediately. Sometimes you gotta kill somebody. Yeah, that's right. This girl gets it. And so she killed, like, and it's it, she had a legitimate badass moment, mm-hmm. which is something that a lot of movies still don't have. Right. You and I went in to see um, The Hitman's Bodyguard, and this actress, whose name I don't know, but... Selma Hayek. No. Oh. Uh, the other one. The one who's... Uh, oh, the part... Yeah. The, the Electra girl in... Um, okay. From Daredevil. Yeah. She's in that movie. And she has a moment where she could legitimately oh. be a badass, and she's getting beat up by a doughy middle-aged man for no reason. She's a CIA agent and every should have every right to just walk all over him. Yeah. And Mike and I had been talking afterwards it would have been like, no, she's a CIA agent. Kick his ass yeah, and then would. when he pulls a gun then you can have the hero save her. I was like, okay, great. They gave Sandra Bullock a badass scene where she annihilates two people. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, that's fairly progressive. Yeah. Like that alone, good for them. Yeah. And then of course she gets knocked out because Sylvester Stallone is the hero. save the day, yeah. yeah. You he can't be also here, did the Robocop thing of, uh, I gotta drive. I'm a man, I drive. Yeah. People should write in and tell us which of the three of us did the best Sylvester Stallone imitation. <laughs> what was up with the soundtrack or the sound effects they for were, this movie? They were so loud. And they were cartoony at yeah. some point. Here's my theory about this movie. I think this movie is the satire that Robocop meant to be. Oh, this is clearly trying to be a satire. I think this is the 90s version of the satire that Robocop is. Because it's something, it's a play on the, what the future is going to be. So it's an exaggeration of all these different things, but it's also a cartoonic exaggeration. Tuning exaggeration of this. DJ, you mentioned this while we were watching. This, Who was the target audience? Yeah, like, I feel like this rated R movie was made for 12-year-old boys to sneak into. This feels like it was made to sell car- to sell toys. Like, can you... I can imagine a Simon Phoenix toy with his blonde hair and his different colored eyes and, and it, all of his goons that looked exactly like extras from, uh, from Mad, Mad Max. Max stuff. Like, it just looked like toys. It looked like toys I would want now. And you could have made this a PG or PG-13 movie by getting rid of all the of fucks. the exhausting swearing just for that joke that they ran into the ground where they could have just had Stallone be like, oh, what the hell is this? Bing, you gotta find one credit. Yeah. Oh, you gotta be shitting me. Boom, you gotta find another credit. Yeah. Okay, we got the joke. And you know what? It's I... gonna be the law of diminishing returns every single time. You just well, we're, we're, we're going to be wait Like, anytime someone swears, we're gonna be looking for it. I like that bit. I think it's a well, clever bit, but again. it means that you need to have that. There were a couple times where it was missing, like, at the end. I think, like, if you're gonna have that bit, they have you commit the to that bit. But I do, I do like the concept of that bit. Yeah, because it could be PG-13, have one fuck in there, <coughs> at the end battle, just have one of the guys say F you to the other one, and then have everything just kind of stop, boom, you know. And they, they both yeah. turn, shoot the thing, then they go back to each yeah. other. That would have been funny. That would have been a, a callback in the third act to a joke set up in the first act, and would have just made that a better joke. But, you know, we're, yeah. I'll we're, that to you. we're, we're also looking at something people. 20 years later. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they also have different levels of brutality in this movie. Like, they, they don't really show that much blood. 
blood. Yeah. But the two moments of that's a lot of blood that's, that jumped out at me were the eyeball thing. Wesley Snipes Pretty intense. rips a guy's eyeball out and, well, we don't see that, but we see the eyeball on a stick. They cut a half hour out of this movie. And a lot Damn. of what they cut out was the violence of showing him ripping the eyebrow, eyeball out. Stallone keeps mentioning the daughter. There are shots in here of the daughter being one of Dennis Leary's people. But ah. he never really like, addresses gonna, that, that. Yeah, he mentions this, watching this as a kid and even watching it now. I can remember being like, oh, she's going to be his daughter. Sandra like, Bullock. Yeah, Sandra Bullock. Is, and like I can remember even doing the math when I was 12. Mm-hmm. And being like, oh, no, wait, that wouldn't work. She would be. I was like, Maybe she's slightly does. too young. Yeah, just, but it was like, because she would have been. Because theoretically. Ten when it happened, and, and so she should be forty six. But I can remember like having done that math as as a kid, mm-hmm. and being like that wasn't it. And then like they end up having that that sex scene. I was like, I really, if this ends up being his kid, it's going to be, be weird. weird. But I can remember, even remember, and I, I had no, I was not sexually mature as a twelve year old kid at all. Like I who got, is uh, some weirdos? Yeah, like a whole bunch of kids. Yeah, but. But, you uh, had a point you were leading to. Yeah, no, no. Uh, that the daughter was somewhere in this movie? Yeah, no, like, like I just assumed it was. And the fact that she still wasn't is weird. Mm. Well, they like, have a throwaway line that she's dead. Uh, his wife is dead. The, right. the mayor at some point says... Well, look into your life daughter. Is de- no, the police chief says that. The mayor, Cocteau, says... Everyone you love is every, dead. He says, your family is dead. Yeah. Well, I guess she went underground and is part of uh, Edgar Friendly's group. Okay. So in but, the real world, that yeah. Or in the... Because there's the, still s- scenes... I guess I didn't notice it, but I guess there's a scene where Stallone is being protective of one of the women in Dennis Leary's group. That's his daughter, and then she's in the end scene when Dennis Leary's crew pops up. Okay. I, I don't remember because I was too distracted by the chemistry between Benjamin Bratt and Dennis Leary, yeah. like we talked they, about. They really had Those something. two are going at I think they're, I think they're gonna. I think they're going to go the distance. Yeah. Why were Benjamin Bratt and Wesley Snipes wearing tires as outfits? I don't know. It, it looked like I Wesley Snipes. Hard to make. It has to be hard to make a tire outfit. The only None thing... of the other uh, scraps were wearing that. Yeah. Right. It, if that had to go back to the 90s, it's like, oh, Wesley Snipes is wearing Tina Turner's costume from oh. Mad Max Thunderdome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is what people in the 90s thought the future was going to look like. Right. I should probably adjust. Yeah. yeah. I did like that uh, when Wesley Snipes was making a break for it, he made his way to Robertson, like Doheny, Beverly area, which was awfully familiar for me because that's basically where I live. I did yeah. like, there were a couple of times, Wilshire and Sunset was Yeah, and they around. said, we're going to take Santa Monica Boulevard and they showed an image. I'm like, that's not Santa Monica Boulevard. <laughs> right. But, uh, when, yeah, when they were at Doheny and Robertson, I was like, oh, they're headed over to Sam's. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Sandra Bullock's apartment is the Pacific Design Center. Like every other future movie that's ever <laughs> Because uh, when I saw, oh man, what was the movie? We saw Bowfinger. That was another one of the movies in my uh, movie night of movies Sam hasn't seen. And the the mental heads, mind heads, their headquarters is the Pacific Design Center. Uh, it's just a good, weird looking yeah. building. Yeah, it just yeah. looks like inside of a spaceship or yeah, future tech. So no one in this future touches each other. Like they're high five. They they get their hands yeah, like you don't touch each other two inches germs. within each other. And then you kind of do a weird circle motion. And then you take your hand back because germs, apparently. The sex scene is and yet pretty still... much the exact same sex scene for the most part as Barbarella, but not done as well. Mm-hmm. That's sloppy filmmaking. It's obno- it yeah. was obnoxious. It's like, okay, here's something that was done 15 years earlier. Let's do a, a lesser version of that. I will just say how much I love the, uh, it's R-rated, we better throw some boobs in. The unnecessary boob call. I think that was Rebel part of the Cop satire. has that too. Well, yeah. Re- yeah. Robocop does, and but they're walking through a locker room. That was literally just they he sat down to watch TV and boobs. Well, they're gone now for no. Oh, reason. and in the sex scene, there was a, a split shot of. I don't think there's I, any nipple. I think I just saw under boob. You might be oh, right. I, mean, I don't know. I saw, I I saw testicles all over outline. the movie too. Yeah, so yeah. you know, what do I know? I'm some. Yeah. Pervy you're old you're guy. a man that knows <laughs> testicles. Yeah, yeah. You do have an eye for balls. You know, everyone's always said that about me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's five. You should see like when he's filling out those highlights, like those magazines where you gotta look for like where's the duck in the tree. He just circles all the balls he sees at the picnic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
Uh, uh, you're just like the kid from Superbad? Yeah. Well, what did you guys think about the showdown at the museum? I didn't like it that the guns were functional in the museum. I didn't like that the guns were loaded in the yeah, museum. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. I'm like, I don't know why they need to have live ammunition. I feel like this. I feel like it's every bit as educational. Well, well, it was, they're just prop guns. It was yes. impenetrable glass. He couldn't punch it. He couldn't kick it. But he could slowly lift the guy through he it. He could suplex a man through it. That The physics on that really pissed me off. Because I'm like, because he was throwing some great kicks. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know if you guys know physics at all. A single point of contact is going to do it's a lot bad, more yeah. damage than a... A literal Six slapstick yeah. full of contact. Yeah. That's the whole point of a slapstick. Yeah. I don't like this lore that was, I think, marketing for the movie where they said that Wesley Snipes, who is a black belt, had to slow down all of his moves so the cameras could pick him up. Yeah, I've heard that about every karate guy ever. BS. Yeah. Yeah. Say that to his face. I, I will. He's an old man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fairly certain he can still kick all of our yeah. asses. You heard me, Simon Phoenix. <laughs> He's like a crazy religious guy now. He, he practices every religion. Really? Yes. Was it Snipes? Yeah. I was going to say... After the, doing the vampire thing? Like, he's gone all crazy swam. Like, he believes himself a holy man, I believe. He's like, I, I believe in every religion. Like, yeah, he's... he's huh. Because he's like a weird tax evading... Good for him. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm for it. Like, I think he's probably pretentious and a hassle, but it's way better than... But I 100%... Like, I haven't heard any interviews, but I would believe that he believes that. Yeah. I feel like this is the kind of neighborhood that he would live in. We could just start walking up and down the streets yeah, and start yelling, of. Wesley! Wesley! You're going to get a lot of false positives. Yeah. But he does seem more like a kind of guy who would live in like Venice or something like that, right? Or Manhattan hey. Beach. I think he'd have a nice Bel Air house. He can't afford a Bel Air house. He's, he's been in he's all of the yeah. Blade movies. He has uh, the what's the baseball movie? Major League. Thank you. That was another one of the movie nights Sam hasn't seen. He was a big deal in the nineties. Jack Black lives in my neighborhood. Yeah, Jack Black's more successful than Wesley Snipes. I would agree with that. I'm not so sure. I Jack know Black, by the way, now. having a, uh, a a cameo in that was crazy. That was, was awesome. That was so weird. Yep. Yeah, that was. I weird. mean, he's also in Waterworld. I didn't yep. know that either. He's in Waterworld. Yeah. He's in Neverending Story. Three. Three. I didn't know who. Yeah, he's the bad guy in Never Ending yep. Story 3. The first time I... Never Ending Story 1 was one, another movie night uh, Sam hasn't seen. Uh, Which is so weird, because aren't you the star of Never Ending Story <laughs> 1? That is I, weird. Isn't the star that weird moon a child? Treyu? Moon child! No, like a Treyu. Oh. No, you're the kid in the library. Uh, I'm the library. kid sitting alone in an attic. Yeah. Talking to himself. Yeah. That movie That movie was weird. Yeah. I get that like a lot of kids like, like Never Ending Story. I'm, I saw it as an adult. It was just too weird? I feel about it the same way I feel about the Goonies, but you can listen to that episode. That kid, the library kid, grew up to be kind of a weird looking adult now. You so. don't. You don't say. look like him <laughs> now. Do we want to say anything else about the original Demolition Man before we remake it? Where do they keep getting their ammunition from? They have their guns. Yeah, no idea. No idea. Like, <laughs> this movie's wrought with holes. Yeah. So, like, uh, Wesley Snipes has Mayor unlock some buddies for him. Oh, yeah. Yep. They briefly flirt with the idea of going after uh, Dennis Leary and then don't. They just basically immediately turn yeah, on the they mayor. Gonna, they thought about doing their job for a second and then they're like, why don't we just eh, take just, over? Why don't we just kill them, co kill Cocteau? <laughs> and it felt like, Wesley Snipes said, here are six guys I want. It feels like he had more than six guys even before he went and thought out a bunch more. Um, and then they're going and talking and somehow they found a bunch of women who are super into them. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, well, no. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm perfectly okay with women being some of the people that got thought out. But where but were they kept in that maximum security? Uh... More importantly, where are these loose moral women in our idealistic utopic future? Yeah. Who played the mayor's assistant? Uh, the guy from Beetlejuice playing his character from Beetlejuice. Mm -hmm. I kept thinking it was Matthew Broderick and I kept knowing that it was not. Yeah, no, he, the no. guy does kind of look like if Matthew Broderick got stung by a bee. I believe he <laughs> died shortly after this in oh, Beetlejuice. Oh, no. Yeah. He's playing the same character he played in Beetlejuice for the most part. Derek Do we want to close on the original before we jump into the yeah, movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's let everybody know how it wraps up. The good guys win. Yeah, big time. They freeze him. Wesley yeah, oh, yeah, that gets was the, frozen. That was the other bit of gore in the movie. There was the eyeball, and then when his head gets, gets kicked off, it's a lot of frozen blood that flies to the air. Yeah. And for some reason, I was like, <laughs> And the electric works. ice that freezes everyone. I do ice want nine. to point out how great the special effects are. I think they all held up. I like the practical effects. Not the sound effects, but the visuals. Yeah, not yeah. the sound effects were horrible. I yeah. tend to agree with you. I mean, the, the beginning of the movie starts with them blowing 
blowing up a building. Right. I wrote down, uh, I miss 80s movie budgets, even though this is 1992. Yeah. But this has an 80s action feel yeah, to it. Yeah, but you would do that with CGI now. Yeah. They blew something the frick up, and you yeah. can yeah. tell. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. I agree. I think this, the design on this movie is fantastic. I don't know who did the cars, but I thought the cars looked really good. Yeah, they and the cars ended things. up looking like cars actually look now. Yeah. I liked the little hollow stick. Like, maybe that is why I liked this movie, is it was designed well. Like, yeah, I think a lot of the tech wanted... where they were basically using iPads, mm-hmm. that's pretty impressive uh, for 1993. Call on what the phones would look like. They didn't call cell phones, but like even the video lines yeah. coming in. Yeah. Like, I was like, oh yeah, good work. As, in, as far as like slightly off future movies are concerned, this one's pretty close. Yeah. And they obviously put a lot of money into it because this world looked good. Yeah, it really did. Yeah. I didn't recognize, I know a lot of it was shot in San Diego and shot here. Aside from the design center, I didn't really recognize any locations. Neither did I. The, uh... the tunnel that they go through is the second street in Figueroa Tunnel in downtown, and they dressed it up a little bit, the entranceway. And I was like, wow, that's really neat. The way they kind of stuck up big, probably just fabric scrims or whatever with lights on the inside. But like, yeah, that did a really good set decorating job, probably fairly easily, too. Mm-hmm. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought the I the design of the look of the movie was really good, with the exception of the weird rubber tread costumes. The, the generic dystopian future costumes. The the bad guys in Waterworld had the same just... I remember the one thing, the one weird future thing that I was like, nope, that'll never be a thing. When Adam Sandler's friend... Rob Schneider. When Rob Schneider answers the phone and says, hello, 911, if you prefer an automated response, please push one. There is no one in any world, in any shape or form, who will ever prefer an automated response. I think response. that was the joke. Right. That in the future, you, you'll never have to listen to a person if you don't want to. And also, if Taco Bell won the franchise wars, when he says, hey, let's meet up at Taco Bell, which Taco Bell? All restaurants are Taco Bell. Bell. But yeah. there must be more yeah, than you, one location. You would at least say the one on La Brea. Yeah. I, and at that point, I would just say food, La Bre- like Taco Bell La Brea. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, even now we have to say, I'm going to Taco Bell. Where? Yeah, Which one? The one near my place. The Rambo joke. The one by you, funny. by the way, doesn't have a drive through and that irritates me. Every time I leave your place late at night and I'm like, oh, I should get Taco Bell. Twice I've fallen for it where I'm like, ah, there's no drive through <laughs> I have to get I, out of my car like a savage. Trick. And then I l- leave not eating a chalupa at 11 o'clock at night when I don't need a chalupa yeah. at 11 o'clock yeah. at night. Or get in your way. Yeah. Living your best life. Do you think Taco Bell paid? They must have. For that? A okay. ton, yeah. I think this movie was designed for product placement. And when we start getting into the our ideal movie, because I think one of the amazing things about this movie is I think it was able to be so expensive is because they set it up to help support itself. That makes sense. The product yeah. placement with Taco Bell is pretty amazing. I mean, it's basically um, Palm Wonderful presents the greatest story ever sold. This movie is sponsored by Taco Bell. And every single time they played a, a radio jingle as the new version of music, I'm assuming some of them were fake, but some of them were real. That really bugged me. No, I think they were all real. I think they were all real. And there mm-hmm. you go. I think that's... I really hated that music jingles as music. It just didn't make sense to me. Because she was weird for being enamored with old culture. Right. But everyone else... But everyone else loved was okay jingles. listening to jingles. And that there was, was no the, new music. Was right. The oldie station she specifically sure. put on the oldie station sure but that's the only mu- like you got the idea that that was the music everyone listened to that is Brad true. Sang it the and got nervous. piano that's player true. inside taco bell was that's, playing that's true you're that, right yeah ho 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 muzak is yeah. always old yeah. yeah but it was just but, I, those, but I agree with you it was an interesting idea can we get into the yes. our ideal remake Let's, you want to throw out your joke one first dj yeah dj uh, tell us about your uh, i think idea. we should make this movie just shot for shot and just switch the title characters roles just switch wesley snipes and sylvester stallone that's it Every, everything else is exactly the same same actors yeah yeah same actors if they're still alive yeah if possible is it because you uh nope assistant bob is dead but is it because you don't I like assume, the i i I assume Cocteau is also pa- has also passed away. Probably. And what was uh, the... Oh, man. The one that Stallone had been friends with, the pilot who was... Lamb. Been... Lamb's probably dead. No, that actor's still alive. Really? He played the blind guy on Go On with Matthew Perry. Okay. Uh, first of all, I loved that show. Yeah. How did you not know that guy then? I thought he... Because pa- I, I remember him from that show. I thought he pa- passed away since that show was on. Oh, okay. I hope he's not dead. That actor, every time I see him, I'm happy to see him. He's never mm-hmm. not amazing. His last name is Cobb. I can't pull his first name right now. I but can't I thought it this, but he's so good. I thought it before, though. And now, though, after having actually sat down to watch it... Did you, did you say that before? I know you said it as a joke, but 
was it because you didn't want the black guy to be the criminal? A or was bit, it yeah, just like when joke? I first okay. thought about it, I was like, if you made that movie today, you would have like have to switch it, and you should. <laughs> like, yeah. like, yeah, but, but it was one of those, I was like, that was weird. It was also just, America was so scared of black guys with yellow hair. Mm. It was Dennis Rodman's fault. Nope. This Wesley Snipes Dennis Rodman. hated this, got rid of it immediately afterwards, thought it looked ridiculous, and then Dennis Rodman Loved took it. the look immediately after this movie came out. So this so this movie inspired Dennis Rodman? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I can remember that being like just a, it was a new thing and it was it was just a picture of scary. So yeah. you would flip everything. Would you call it man demolition? No, no, no. Yeah, but I was honestly thinking while watching this, I think I would switch the whole, uh, the, the three main characters. I think I would go Sandra Bullock as a, as a Joan Spartan. That's the thing. This movie needs more than one woman. Let, mm-hmm. let Sly Stallone be Simon Phoenix and have Wesley be Huxley. That's I, how I would do it now. If we were doing there an are, ideal remake, I don't think Wesley Snipes is a good enough actor that I would have him. I don't know who I would put in that role, but you haven't listened to the RoboCop episode because we're recording this before it dropped yet, but I was big on representing the ethnic breakdown of Detroit in that, and I would want to do that with Demolition Man. I, this, I think, I'm totally with you, instead of John Spartan, Joan Spartan, or Joanne Spartan, I would cast a Latina actress, American Ferrara, from... Um, Superstore now, and real women have curves. As the as, as uh, Joan Spartan. Is she an action star? Nope. I feel like you could do. I feel like I'm not opposed to Joan Spartan, but I don't it's see America. Be America, can America kick some ass. Yeah, she's tiny. America Ferrera is like I would rather cast Chloe Bennett, the lead from of uh, uh, Agents of Shield. I don't know who. Um, although she's is, she's not Latina. She's, she's white. Or? Uh, she's half white, I think, half. Asian of some variety. I'm, okay. I, I think she's Chinese. I'm not sure. I, that's great because there's a large Asian population. There is. too. And Chloe Bennett is on a TV show where she does action stuff. Okay. Who, if I'm going to be pulling from uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I think the Dennis Leary character, Ming something. Oh, man. I'm not going to think of her name either. The one who plays Agent May on Agents okay. of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. She's also the voice of Mulan, but she kicks so much ass. I, would, I think she should be Dennis Leary. I wouldn't like her as Dennis Leary because that actress, while she can be complicated, or whatever always strikes me as a rule follower. Wow. The, uh, the one I'm the talking actress, about? Yeah. I'm looking up her name. Like, I just don't ever see her being a, a rebel leader. Why can't Dennis Leary still play that role? Because I don't want him to. Okay. He I could. like Dennis Leary. I don't. How come... I thought he was very Dennis Leary in that role. Where yeah, we watched it with the subtitles because my hearing is so bad. Yeah, and there were definitely a lot of times where it looks like the subtitles for this were actually generated from the script because they were different from what was. I actually noticed that said. too. I thought that was fun. Yeah, uh, uh, I don't like Dennis Leary. Ming Na Wen. I don't like Dennis Leary because I don't think he was ever really a comedian. I think he was just an actor, and, and yeah. I don't like yeah. And I, it bothers me when comedians can be successful comedians and not be funny. What do you think about Louis C.K. in the Edgar-friendly role? That might be fun. I went with, and this is one of those I'm I just kind of love. about Louis C.K. And I I'm not either. And I don't think I don't think he has the charisma to be Edgar. Yeah, friendly. I can see okay. that too. I went with a weird. I want him to be a young rebel leader or whatever. I went with Donald Glover, but I just like him all the time. That's but fair. I, I also kind of like him because he, he strikes me as smart, like he would know how to rig up spray paint bullshit. I like it that he wouldn't have been an adult. Yeah. Back, or he wouldn't have been old enough to really remember things back in... And he still rejects I'd still want society. it to be 1996 and 2032. You think... Well, here's my question. Demolition Man is kind of a play on our fears of the early 90s and also our aspirations for what a utopic future might be, but then kind of like breaking that down a little bit. What is our fear as a society right now? Because I think if we were going to remake Demolition Man, we can't pull our fear from the 90s we're no longer afraid of a, a Los Angeles that's been burned to the ground by black right. people. So we're afraid of Korea now. We're a little bit afraid of North Korea, but I, I, I would think say we're that's, more afraid of white militiamen. Uh, I white think we're more militia afraid men. of white militiamen, and I think we're afraid of the middle of the country swallowing up the edges of the country. Or, or burning them off, yeah. And so I think it's not the big one in 2010. It I would think be it like needs the to be, blackout or the no, thing that I think it needs to be us. like the new civil war. Okay. I think it needs to be civil war part two, where it's instead of it being the north versus the south, it's the inner versus the outer. So the original takes place three years after it was made. So would you want to have this one start in 2020? If this took place three, if we were to make Demolition Right Man right now and it were to take place three years after today, that means it would be happening theoretically at the end of Donald Trump's first term as president, which would mean that you could have this turn around and you could do a completely different movie where all of a sudden he's like just declared himself dictator and there was a, a uprising to kind of just shut that shit down. And that's what's going on. Like you could make, what I think would be interesting is 
you have these two people being frozen and sent to the future. Wesley Snipes is kind of already a badass in the past, and then he goes to the future and is a badass. But they, they make a big point about it being programmed into his brain. What if he was just some billionaire, whomever? What if he was Martin Shkreli, who was like kind of taking over like, ha ha ha, look what I'm doing. He gets taken down and everything. But then this billionaire who's never had to get his own hands dirty, all of a sudden gets programmed with all this like badass fightingness. And is all of a sudden someone who's always had people to take care of things is all of a sudden able to get his own hands dirty and loves it. And that's your villain. I think a person like Martin Storelli is who we currently fear as our like current boogeyman. A scary black man in the 90s, a Martin Storelli today. I don't think that's accurate. I still think a lot of America is still really scared of, of scary black man. I think so. And, I, I'm and, sure, and I, think I don't lot, think yeah. you're wrong, but I don't think you can make a movie about a scary black man. Fair enough. But who, yeah, who could you replace that with? What if the Scarelli archetype was the Dr. Cocteau type character? You want to combine Wesley Snipes and Dr. Cocteau? No, 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 no. Um, oh, Scarelli as Dr. Cocteau? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Also, we need to change his name real bad. Real yeah. Bad. What's his, what's a, be- any, any name is better. Tocco. Great, done. Tocco. Dr. Taco is better than Cocteau. Well, Doc, I mean, Dr. 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 Taco? Dr. Taco? Dr. Taco is better, yes. He's the owner of Taco Bell. That would make sense, at least Can Giancarlo Esposito play him from Breaking Bad? Sure, well, he was Taco, great. right? Yeah. Yeah, he was Taco. Well, and that would make sense because, hey, Taco Bell won the... Yeah, yep. Now, that said, do you want to leave it as Taco Bell? Yeah. I wouldn't be opposed to I it. I wouldn't either. Uh-huh. This movie is designed for product placement, so it's whoever pays us the most money. Right. I like the idea of Phoenix, they originally wanted Jackie Chan to play him but Jackie Chan had always played good guys and that's did his not, he never plays bad guys. Yeah did not want to play a bad guy. I think Stephen Chow from Kung Fu Hustle and Shaolin mm-hmm. Soccer is a great action star and I think because the Phoenix character is kind of Joker y, I think Stephen Chow, who does these action comedies, could pull off a really kind of how old is he? Stephen Chow is yeah well like fifty now. Demolition. I think he's a little old. Yeah, for that. he is a little. Uh, I, th- it, I I think pulling onto someone who is jokery is a good idea. Wesley Snipes was just such a hodgepodge of everything in this movie. Like he was just so e- like, but I not think he's, good. No, not yeah. in a good way. Yeah, that's why he said hodgepodge instead of uh, of. I think I think or... he fits the movie, but I think that for the movie that we have. He's probably the right person for yeah. it. But I think you're right. I think we need someone who is Joker-esque. So we need someone who's really willing to just, like, like completely lose their freaking mind. Jared Leto. <laughs> no. no. Hard I'm, pass. I'm kidding. What's a good equivalent? Uh-huh. What's the kid from Chronicle? Uh, Dan, uh, Dane DeHaan. Dane DeHaan. Pre-Valerian? I, I would have said, have, yeah, yeah, sure, why not? But post-Valerian, no. Uh, I'm trying to go through all of, like, recent Marvel villains or superhero villains or people like that, and they're just aren't that many good... Casting the Joker is tough, because I agree. I think you're Simon Phoenix, which is a great name. It's hard, because like he, he has to be charming and charismatic, but no parts of him can be soft or accessible. Mm-hmm. No parts of him can be soft. He, he needs to be hard but endearing. I'm just trying to think of like current TV shows. What about the guy who's playing Cassidy on Preacher? Maybe. I don't buy him a super tough, but I like him. He was also in Misfits. Did you ever watch Misfits? I did not. Yeah, there's something about him that's likable. What Would about you... even as crazy as it sounds? I was just thinking about Misfits, but what about Ramsey Bolton? When Ramsey Bolton's not playing a psycho, he's charming Ooh. and still scary. I would yeah. say he's a, he's pretty good casting. Yeah. And he's I, and, I and he's clearly a phenomenal actor. Yeah. I think you're right. I, I think could that's, buy him leading an I army. I think that's good. Um, What's the new show he's in? His name is Iwan Rion. I think it's Ewan or Ian. Ewan. It's spelled I W. W A N R H E O N is his last name. Who did we land on for our Joan Jet? Chloe. Chloe Bennett. Bennett. That's right. Yep. Chloe Bennett. I like the idea of having the child maybe showing up and being Huxley, although that would be really convenient. That... But maybe it's because hey, both of your parents are gone. I don't. Yeah. I don't think the child should be Huxley. I think the child should be Dennis Leary. I think yeah, the, yeah. the Dennis Leary character is like, my dad... Donald is, Glover. Don, I think yeah. Donald Glover needs to be the child, which, of course, since it's Donald Glover and Chloe Bennett, that doesn't really work. So that means we would need to recast one of them. Never heard of adoption? <laughs> heard of what? Adoption? That Nicolas Cage movie? Yeah, that's that's adaptation. Oh. Because I've heard of that. Yeah. <laughs> Can we have the Huxley type be someone big and strong like The Rock, but because it's a crimeless future just because he's the muscles doesn't really get to but use them very much beach muscle, yeah it's all, all beach muscle yeah i think that's really funny like if it's the rock but the guy 
but he has no idea how to throw a punch. Yeah. I and think I'm, that would be really funny. I like the fact that The Rock is vaguely ambiguous about what race he is. And that's how I see the future. I see the future mm -hmm. being a lot more mixed race. And uh, I like that. That's I the can, whole Blade Runner thing, right? Well, with the pigeon language, I always loved that. Uh, yeah. I can remember reading like a real specific article years ago about when they first designed Superman. They did their best not to make him look German or Irish or what, like a blend of all the white races, but still races. Right. So nobody could have ownership of it. And then they were comparing that to The Rock now and why he was so popular. And I thought it was real cool. You know, Superman's yeah. Jewish, right? He was made by Jewish guys. Yeah. Yeah, like, like, and like, as, sure. But when, like, in the physical designs of them, they were, when they were, they did, he doesn't look particularly Jewish. And that was by That's design. That's true. They did their best to not make him look like any one ethnicity more than another. Just that was generically a, white. Yep. Great. Right. And, <laughs> um, so are we cool with The Rock for Huxley? I love I it. I think that's a fantastic yeah, that's idea. Fun. Okay. Who do we want for uh, The Rock's original partner who falls in love with our Dennis Leary type? Uh, who was your... Oh, I liked mine here. I, I went Leslie Jones. Done. Sold. Yeah, I like it too that she's a badass. Mm -hmm. And in the future, there's really no need that for badass. That was what I was like thinking of when I was like, who could we use in that? Yeah, that was where I went. I also just think she's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she is. Okay. But I don't think any of us know Benjamin Bratt's character name. Garcia. Garcia? Okay. Well done. Yeah, didn't he, he has it's a... Like Alfredo Garcia. Alfredo Garcia, yeah. Uh, it was before we saw that he was in this as a whatever, but when I was just first trying to make the... Uh, I had Jack Black playing Dr. Taco. Yeah. I'm I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. I think... I think Instead this, of Giancarlo Esposito? I'd give, it to, I'd give it to Jack Black, and the reason why is because part of what makes Demolition Man funny is they're constantly making references to things and you need to have someone from the original Demolition Man in it. I, also I, I like this <laughs> idea just because you're right. As soon as he appeared on screen we all knew, oh, it's him. A guy who's just known as a good guy. Why couldn't Henry Winkler play him? I like that. Good, great, wonderful. Instead of Jack Black? Sure. Okay. I'll settle for that. Mm -hmm. This is one I like. I also cast Bob, the fat guy from whatever. I cast him. I cast Rob Schneider's character. And I cast uh, Shawshank Redemption. Great. Tell us. Who's assistant Bob? Channing Tatum. Hear me out. There was all big, fat, effeminate dude was like an archetype in the, the 80s and 90s. That's true. And still like yeah. varies a little. Yeah. I mean, that's the easy casting. Yep. It would be to make it varies. Yeah. But I think sexy boy toy is the new version of that. Like sexy. Like I do. Like the, so Henry uh, Winkler has Channing Tatum as like the that is the vanity piece. Yeah, and I I like again that Channing Tatum's a really fit guy or John Cena who doesn't really do I don't think anything. John Cena can pull it off. <laughs> but like the yeah he would be a showpiece. Yeah, that, like, yeah. He's a, I, and I think my... Channing Tatum's a really good actor too. Mm -hmm. And I think he he's got a sense of humor about. So. Well, that's one of the that's one of the conceits that I think is going to be the case if we're exaggerating the current state of affairs in our current reality. We have to exaggerate the way the stereotypes people believe about LA. In LA, people believe that everyone's super Super fit and attractive for no purpose. So I think that idea that you're going with making Channing Tatum is such a good idea because that's really what the exaggeration of current Los Angeles is. Mm -hmm present company excluded <laughs> um and i think that's what like i think that's what we need to lean heavily into like i feel like what are the character people yeah the... like i feel like the car like the self-driving cars could literally just be tanning booths on wheels yeah yeah and that's why i think having it be taco bell is funny mm -hmm. but i feel like if it would be everyone says they're going to eat it uh, at like oh yeah tender greens oh yeah yeah tender greens tender yeah. greens we're eating at whole foods everyone eats at whole foods but everyone is actually eating at i was gonna get sick yeah at, like oh yeah everyone eats at whole foods everyone eats at whole foods but that's secretly that's everyone eats at taco bell that's fun i like that a lot uh yeah i, I like that gag uh the other one rob schneider's character i had aziz ansari great perfect wonderful mm. i think that's the exact right casting and and it's hard because I like Aziz way, way more than I like Rob Schneider. But Aziz but again, always bugs me. you're looking at it from today. Yeah. 20 years ago, you probably loved Rob Schneider. Yeah, yeah. The world loved Rob Schneider. I never did. And then finally, and it's a guy I would just like to see start playing a bad guy because I think he would be really good at it. And I assumed he was a bad guy when I started uh, Shawshank, Captain George Earl. I'd like Christopher Maloney. I want to see Chris Maloney start playing villains. Who's Christopher Maloney? Law and Order. Uh, he's the soup can on Wet Hot American Summer. Is he really? Mm-hmm. I'm looking he's him not up. The, no, that's H. John Benjamin. H. John yeah. Benjamin's the soup can. He's the guy that talks to the soup can. Oh, he's great. Yeah, you're real Mr. Kick-Ass, Mr. Rubber Burner.
Order. He was in a... Oh, yeah, yeah, Law and Order. He also had a couple episodes, or uh, he had one episode of Scrubs. Yeah, I think and he was in more than just one, but you might be right. He's in one episode of Scrubs, because I remember I loved that episode, and he's yeah. so good at it. Oh, man, that guy is so amazingly funny. Yeah, I want him to start playing bad guys. Like, I think that would be... He played bad guy in Oz. <sighs> he played a co- kind of... He, he was a bad guy. There, everybody think, in Oz was bad. Yeah, everyone was shaped I think he's a really good example of a guy you can... Like, a, a good guy... Who's just slightly off. Yeah, and I, I think him playing like a cop that thinks he's right and is wrong would be pretty easy role for him. I think that's a really brilliant choice. Yeah. The action in this was pretty well done. Who would you guys want to direct? That is a good question. I'm not a big Michael Bay fan, but I think Michael Bay does action as well as anyone these days. And I he does dis- big budgets. Right? I disagree. I think having seen some of Michael Bay's most recent movies, I think his time has come and gone. I I think Michael Bay does explosions really well, but I don't think that's what this what a remake would need because I think part of what made this so charming was its reliance on practical effects, which since we're making it now wouldn't happen. So, but I think you need to rely on really good fight choreography. I think you need to get the director from John Wick. John Wick was Chad Stileski, who was the stunt coordinator for like V for Vendetta and well, he was he was a stunt guy and he, I think he was uh what's the actor in John Wick? Yeah, Keanu Reeves. Reeves. He was Keanu Keanu Reeves stunt guy. Okay. And Keanu, like, he, he wanted to do this movie, and Keanu Reeves was like, yeah, I'm in. I've only seen the first John Wick movie, but I'll go with that. I think there are other good action directors who don't immediately spring to mind. This I is something I should have looked I, up ahead of time. I feel like whoever does this needs to have a pretty solid sense of humor, and I didn't see that in Wick. That's I, I, fair. But I think with Michael Bay, when he did Pain and Gain, okay, Pain and Gain is funny. Is a funny satire, you know, satirical. I, I wouldn't give it to Pain and Gain though. I mean, if you're going to be doing something like that, give it to Adam McKay because he did the other guys. I yeah. Like that that'd be fun. I would take that. I think if you're looking to do a satire, I think Adam McKay might be the the. That might be the right one. He might not let it be serious enough, but I would rather err on the side of silly. He also did. Uh, I can't believe uh, the Big Short. Like yeah. he can make a good serious drama, especially if it's a parody of our current state of affairs. Yeah. Like, and he's a writer too, so I say let Adam McKay write and direct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's go with Adam McKay. I like Adam. Good McKay. job, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> good job, Sam. I feel like we've all had big castings on this. As far as we've who, done a pretty good job splitting the spots. Who did you guys want Ming Na Wen to be? I would originally thought that she would have been a good uh, Dennis Leary, but I, and if we're if, if we're having Chloe Bennett as. Uh, as the demolition man and then it's her 40 50 something odd child who's now running the scraps I mean no one actually is good casting for that yeah because Asian girl mm-hmm. so instead of Donald Glover I want to put Donald Glover in it somewhere I really like him being a rebel leader I just feel like that's a good role for him I agree, so I guess we'll just have to hip-pocket it for something else. I'm trying to think of other things in this movie that we haven't really cast yet. There aren't that many major characters. Like, we've got most of them. I think, well, I, I mean, since you you did the Rob Schneider scene. But like, who's not even credited. This is a completely separate thought, but it's something that bothered me during the movie. Whose car was that? Whose red Oldsmobile? Was Oldsmobile still a company? Did Oldsmobile still exist <laughs> in the 90s? I think it was Edgar Friendly's. No one ever, they just... Hey, there's a really nice, well-maintained car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if we don't know who it belongs to, let's just take it. Yeah. This is just, no, it's just here. This is just the communal car. We just all that we, take. we immaculate care. Uh, I love how friendly the underground was. They were so these, nice. These criminals, these monsters, all they did was cook out underground. Yeah. They did nothing. Else. Well, well I think that was the point. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sure, and I get it, but I've never met a group of outcasts as friendly. Well, let's go through our our remake cast. As Joan Spartan, we have Chloe Bennett. Mm -hmm. As Edgar Friendly, we have Donald Glover or Ming-Na Wen. We'll have them both come in and read for it. Two different types. We'll see who who hits it in the room. Who wants it more? (laughs) Phoenix is going to be more of a Scarelli type, played by Ewan Rion from Game of Thrones and Misfits. Rowan. You know who I'm talking about, everybody. Dr. Taco will be played by the instantly likable Henry Winkler. Huxley will be The Rock. Garcia, Alfredo Garcia, will be Leslie Jones. (laughs) Assistant Bob is Channing Tatum. The Cars will be Tanning Booths on Wheels. 
Rob Schneider's unnamed operator will be Aziz Ansari, which will probably be good. It can Right, lighthearted. People like him immediately. Yeah. yeah. He can Pol- say a couple quick jokes and we're out. The police chief will be Chris Maloney. It will be written and directed by Adam McKay and it will take place in 2020 at the beginning and then fast forward to 2056. And our Taco Bell analog is still Taco Bell. Yeah, it's still Taco Everyone Bell. Everyone says they're going to Whole Foods, but they really exactly. go to Taco Bell. Okay, well that covers a lot of our I like tender greens. But, tender uh, greens, okay. Yeah, but they're really going to Taco Bell. I think the first And everyone actually, knows oh. because like Taco Bell's business is booming. And yeah. Tender Greens has one location. Yeah. and But that's what we're like, yeah, we're going to Tender Greens. But it's like government subsidy. Yeah, that's like even a joke in it. You want to go to Tender Greens? But they don't ask which one. Like, oh, I, I saw them at Taco Bell. Which one? Right. Yeah, there's only one Tender Greens. There's only one Tender Greens. And I'd love it if they actually go into actual Tender Greens and there's it's just empty. There's no one there. There's no one working there. I'd love it if that's where the bad guys are hiding out. They're hiding out in Tender Greens because no one's there. No one goes there. Is the crime that puts our demolition woman in jail still the same accidental murder of hostages? I'm not opposed to that. Should yeah, but we need... Emails. We need to really fix the spotty police work yeah. on that one. Yeah, we should have less shady police. If it's a Scarelli type, he needs to have done a better masterminding job of making sure she would go down too. Mm-hmm. So it could literally be that as soon as he's picked up, that like it is, he's like a dead man switch, and that actually kills him. That would make sense. That's a thing that she decides at the beginning. Like, ah, you know what? He's got me cornered. I can take him down, but it's going to take me down too, or I can let him go, and I'll go free. Like, nope, I've got him. I, yeah. I think yeah. it's better if she's actually responsible. I think it's better for her character if it's actually weighing down her conscience. Yeah, okay. you probably right. Like, I can do this thing and take him down now and potentially kill 30 people, or I can let him go and... Many, many more will probably die. Yeah, yeah. It kind of goes with the whole demolition. Yeah, I'd like to think that <laughs> one of those, that one of those thirty gets <clears throat> out and like somehow is like, ah, oh, like that's who our taco ends up becoming. Yeah, I like that. Uh, was one I, of the thirty. I have a silly question: Was Sylvester Stallone ever wrong in this movie? I don't think he was. I believe he was never wrong. He was a Mary Sue in this movie, wasn't he? Like he was good at everything, and everything he did was correct. Yeah, I think that was probably written into his contracts back then where I think this is still in the era of Stallone where he got to do a pass at the scripts because some of the jokes were really bad <laughs> and uh, you know like oh look you're on TV yeah like swinging the TV and everything like they weren't good and I think they weren't good in the way that the jokes in Cobra weren't good where Cobra he rewrote Cobra to make it I get all the bus- jokes right I get I, I make a joke every time yeah, Cobra is so weird that when he did the rewrite of the script he told the author of the book that it was based on I want you to change it so I wrote the book and the author was like you had nothing to do with the book you botched up my book to make your movie you weirdo yeah. what is our uh, what are our three shells I have a pitch for it but I want to know if you guys had something in mind instead of three shells instead of three shells I no we keep the three shells you want to keep the three, the three shells? shells are so iconic to it's, this yeah it, the three shells are the only thing people remember from this the movie. three shells in this are the I'd buy that for a dollar from Robocop. That's that's true. I think if you were going to do something modern that's uh, different, I would think you would have different, like, access ports in the wall. Like, this one port's for some, like, there's, like, three or four, like, a whole wall of, like, different, like, access points, and, like, you're supposed to pee in one of them, you're supposed to poop in one of them, you don't know. It's, like, instead of there being toilets, like, the whole system is... You could, you could even, still have the three shelves. I'm trying to even think if it would be, would you make a weird joke about public restrooms, just in general, not being gender-specific? Yeah. That might be it. That might be the joke. Which one's the men's room? The yeah. what? What? The yeah. men's room. That is... It's a bad joke, but it feels accurate to the world of Demolition Man. Mm. That's my Chloe Bennett imitation. <laughs> <laughs> hey, which one's the men's room? I mean, the women's room. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What will be our three seashells? I mean, we can it has it. to it be has, the three seashells. Be great. We'll yeah. three I seashells. saw this in the theater. I remember. probably have not seen it since, but the three seashells have stuck with me to the point that when I was in Asia, being a hero, doing a USO tour, <laughs> um, because I'm a patriot and I love our country mm. and I love our troops. God bless America. I was worried about the bathrooms in Japan and, and Korea and the other comedian who is my age. We were both like, oh, I hope it's not the three seashells yeah. okay then so. we, then if, if that's what this movie is we have to yeah, keep it yeah but i do think we turn it up and have people have some stomach problems and they're like i'm gonna need fucking five seashells yeah <laughs> 
Can hey. I get an extra seashell in here? Yeah. Would Could you hand me a seashell? Slide some of the seashell underneath the stall. <laughs> During the cryo freeze, let's let's get the Stallone cryo freeze from Planet Hollywood yeah. and just put it in there as an Easter egg. Yeah. <laughs> I it agree. Was, that cryo freeze uh, him was a table at one of the Planet Hollywoods. That's weird. Like you could eat on it, and it was awesome. I uh, really, I saw it at one where it, it was, was hanging, hanging in the stairwell. That's it was a be round a heavy stairwell wall piece. Sure. Yeah. Well, okay. So here's our problem with Demolition Man. The bad guy's whole plot was, I'm gonna revive this bad guy to go take out a, like a rebel leader. I think that's a bad. That plot. Is, yeah, that's a bad. I feel like the bad guy needs to be. It's more like taking down my political rivals, and it's more like I need I need a hitman to take out some of the people who are like. I mean, you can have yeah, that. What if the friendly is more of a Bernie Sanders type? I can, okay. Yeah, so it is his political rival. Uh, maybe I feel like he has to have something to do. The fact that there are no other countries is is weird to me. In yes, this. and I, I I agree. I yeah. think we need to address that. That there is there war? Well, do you want to go with the whole 1984 war is peace concept? Like, Maybe, are we always at war? Everybody in this world is such a sissy. Well, you bring back someone who the system doesn't believe in, so they can go and con- like have continued contact with these other countries they're at war with. And I think that that's what you need to do. Like, you're bringing back the Martin Squarely so they could go negotiate with the other countries to figure out how they're going to continue the war. And you take them both out. And at the movie, you're en- ending this multi country, multi city war. You're ending this, if we were going to go with the inner country versus the outer country, like, you're ending the this re civil war that turned into a world war. And our Henry Winkler is trying to continue the war and using Martin Squarely as, as his ambassador. Yeah, that would make sense. He is, uh, yeah, prolonging the war. And I think that's it- what I movie is prolonging the war as opposed to killing a rebel and by the demolition lady uh demolition wool man coming back and taking this out all of a sudden one of those continual war machine pieces is gone and now the war can you can start moving what do we like the end of the movie, movie demolition man is what do we do what do we do now uh you guys talk and figure it out now they have well what do we do we're gonna get annihilated by war and they're like well now there's you no one trying not. to keep the war going all we have to do now is sue for afraid. peace yeah. yeah and i think that's what yeah. it needs to be it's a good message for the end too and i think yeah. that's the kind of message that would appeal to people today right yeah it definitely makes it more relevant i like what we came up with on this one i do too dj if people wanted to find out more about you online where would they go to do that they could check out dj dangler's handsome.com that's my website it might not hard to find my last name's dangler let's come on <laughs> <laughs> and as always i'm everywhere at off the mic and I'm in certain places as at Sam Gash, S A M G A S C H. Thank you for joining us, Thanks DJ. For me. This was super fun. Yeah. yeah. And if you guys have enjoyed what you listened to, please go onto iTunes, rate, review, leave a response. We love to hear from you. And those five star ratings really help us promote our brand new podcast, which is fledgling and adorable and helps us grow our wings and fly. Yeah. And join us next time when we will talk about Hocus Pocus. I'm Mike Bobbitt. I'm Sam Gash. I'm DJ Dangler. And this was Ideal Remake. Where's your John Spark? Oh, he went to the bathroom. I, I guess he got all thought out. Oh, sir, I formally convey my presence. How are you doing? Look, I don't know if you guys know it, but you're, uh, you're out of toilet paper. Did, did you say toilet paper? Oh, they used handfuls of wadded paper back in the 20s. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy that you're happy, but the place where you're supposed to have the toilet paper... You got this little shelf with three seashells on it. (laughs) He doesn't know how to use the three seashells. I can see how that could be confusing.